Welcome back to What Are Noobs? This is a bishop. It's a tier 5 British SPG. It's located on the Westbourne of Airfield and it's under the command of Running Hawk. Yes, I did say we'd be doing a series of his replays. Quite a few of them actually. We have got a lot of them. And well, he's now driving the RT with a 4.5 inch gun mounted on top of a Valentine tank chassis. It's fairly accurate, but it's got a fairly short range. And if it can hit the target and penetrate it, it does 450 alpha. So it is quite powerful. And well, he's trying to find a good firing position to fire from. And ideally, he wants to be as close to the enemy as he can without actually being spotted. And knocking all these buildings down is not really a great idea if that's what you want to do. Well, looks like he's going to fire from here. Okay, he's aiming towards the enemy on Temple Mount. It's in the centre of the map. I call it Temple Mount because there's a, a few Roman temples and an amphitheatre. He's going for the OI experimental. Fires around in and gets a direct hit straight away. Okay, we've got a Panzer 3K. Now, that's the Panzer 3 that came in the loot boxes at Christmas. And this replay came from Christmas. Got a hit there on the Panzer 3K, forced him to back away. Now the reload time is actually quite fast on this RT. About 10 seconds. And it dials in very fast on the targets too. So if an enemy tank gets spotted, you can probably get an accurate shot and might be able to land the shell directly onto their engine deck or somewhere vulnerable. And the Panzer 3-4 goes down. We've got a VK-3001D, which is a Panther prototype, the Daimler version, and he gets a direct hit on him for 200 hit points. Going for it again, and the Chappy tries to do a comedy kill and dies in the process, unfortunately. But we fire another one in on the VK. Unfortunately, we lost two teammates there, the Chappy and the Crusader, and here comes the OI Experimental. A uh, direct hit on him for 55. And the OI's gone down. Taken out by our M44. On the other side, we've got a KV-1. Sitting off against our OI Experimental. And we've landed a shell directly on his turret. We could put the shell on his engine deck, actually. Waiting for the reload to go in. Rounds out straight away. And... Well, just missed him. But it was right in front of him and I think it tracked him. And now he's pulled back and we're not close enough to get a shot. Now, please don't knock down more buildings. <laughs> it does make it fairly easy for the enemy to work out where you are if you knock down all the buildings. vk 301 d took that round. So he's badly damaged. The KV-1 went straight through the gap. There's the T1 Heavy. Rounds out on him. Direct hit on his front for 112. The KV-1 looks like he went round the corner there to get shots on the OI without being hit. Ah, but he's been hit by uh, Running Hawk. Yep, nicely lined up. We can put shells right onto his engine deck. Rounds out. And he's been hit again. Looked like that shell hit the turret, though. He's going to go for it again as soon as he's loaded. Rounds out again. That one hit the turret, and he went down immediately afterwards. Now, that Super Jumbo is just too far away for us to hit, but that VK, which is the one that we were hitting earlier, and he's about to die, I think. 12 hit points from a near miss. This could be a kill shot, but he goes up to an Amarak from a Hellcat. OI Experimental. Direct hit on him. Now there is an AMX 12 ton close to our position at the moment. But he's being held off by our KV-1 and Panzer 4H. They're just around that corner. Don't go through the buildings. The AMX 12 ton might see you. He's trying to get close to that Jaffe. You see the limited fire range of this RT does make it a bit of a problem when you're trying to hit targets that are far enough away. Now T-67 comes up behind the OI Experimental. Now T-67s make a very satisfying bang if you can get the shell into the cockpit. There he is. 
line him up. He stopped. Oh, rounds out. Oh, just off his rear. Go for it again. Just pulls back in time. He's got the new camo from Christmas. Trying to get T67. This should be a kill shot if he stays there. It is. Yeah, he made a big mistake, but we did lose one of our tanks there. And I think it was an ammo rack. And an OI experimental off a blind shot kill to Running Hawk. The Super Jumbo is making its way around that corner. We fire a blind shot round in and miss. Over on the other side of the battlefield on Temple Mount, we've got a Chaffee from the enemy team fighting it off against the VK-3001D on our team. And he gets rear-ended by us. 88. Slowly making his way across Temple Mount. We miss with that shot, but we can go for another. Lining up. Getting ready. Here we go. Rounds out. Direct hit, 175, potential high caliber. Go for it again. Oh, he's taking a lot of punishment, that 88, but he's still there. And he's about to kill that VK-3001D. Yep, he did. Keep hitting him, he's tracked. Almost loaded. Rounds out. That'll keep him tracked for a while. 86 hit points. Next shot might kill him. Waiting for the reload. Oh, the next shot did kill him. It was from the M44. That means now there are only three enemies remaining. The 60G FT, which is their tank destroyer, and two Arties, a Gorilla and an AMX-13 F3. Both of the Arties are very experienced players, so this is going to be a bit difficult, but... You can see Running Hawk is moving forward, trying to get as close to the enemy as he can. We know the 60 GFT was seen out north of the runway, and the T-67 is probably holding him in place. Because if he does try to move away, the T-67 will probably see it and kill him. Of course, he might have retreated from that position, though. It's possible. There's one of the RTs, and the T-52s are getting close to him. Now, we just need to get to the other side of the hill. The a M44 just hit him. And the T-52 did as well. And he's gone. That means there's just the Gorilla and the 60G FT now. Looks to me like Running Hawk is going for the direct route to the cap, which is probably the, the easiest thing to do. There's the Gorilla. He's extending his aim to see if he can get a shot at the Gorilla, but he is the other side of that hill, and he's arty safe in there, so, so long as he stays within that groove. The T-52 just got derped, but he took out the Gorilla, and that just leaves the 60G FT. And he has been spotted again. He is north of the runway. The T-67's got him in his sights. And that's the end of the game. So, victory. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. It's an ace tanker for Running Hawk in the Bishop. He managed to get a... Well, he got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 11 in that one. He got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the battle. And he also got a confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And his win eight for the game was 7,139. A good battle in the bishop. Yes, it's a fun RT to play. It can be a little... Uh, well, it's a bit stressful because it's you have to get so close to the enemy. But it can be a lot of fun when you keep punishing them really hard and this map's actually quite good for playing the bishop let's have a look at the team score 
There you go, top of the table, 2,139 hit points of damage. The next high scorer was the Gorilla with 1433, and after that it was the M44 on our team with 1216. Uh, when it comes to kills, it was the T-52. He got a Pescucci's medal for killing at least two enemy RT. He got four kills in total. And, uh, well, Running Hawk using the Anonymizer, he managed to get three kills. So second place when it came to kills. And the M44 got the same. So did the Super Jumper on the enemy team. When it came to base XP, it was Running Hawk with 839 base experience points. 758 for the M44, 740 for the T-52. He fired 28 shots, got 17 direct hits, no penetration but 22 splash. Damage of 2,139 hit points, of which 1,878 were at more than 300 meters. He damaged 9 of the enemy, killed 3, and did 229 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, he earned 39,078 credits, got 19,539 from Holiday Ops, total 58,617. And after Ammunition Respawn, took away 51,617 uh, credits profit. He got two bonds, one for getting the Confederate and one for the High Calibre, and 1,258 XP, times two for the first victory, took away 2,517 experience points altogether. So it was a great game in the Bishop on the airfield, and yes, he did play it very well, except for the fact, obviously, he was knocking over a lot of buildings, and I'm surprised the enemy RT didn't see that and do something about it. But uh, then I suppose they were just too busy getting hits on other enemy tanks. So if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel, and thank you for watching.